thank you, Penny, for joining me today. Would you start off by telling our viewers what the mission of the Council on Alcohol and Drug Abuse mission is? The mission is building a safer and healthier community by preventing and treating alcoholism and drug abuse. And how long has the Council been around? 66 years. Wow. Well, congratulations on such a strong history. Would you tell our viewers what are some of the issues facing our community that the Council addresses? There are many, many issues that alcoholism and drug abuse affect, and so we are addressing those issues, starting with youth, families, homelessness. We have a perinatal program for mothers to get them off of drugs and have healthy babies. We have the Multiple Offender Drinking Driver Program. So alcoholism and dr drug abuse affect the economy. They affect crime. We have a teen court, a drug court. We, we are in just about every area of the community. How do you prevent kids from getting involved with substance abuse? Well, we try to do it lots of different ways. The family is really an important part. We have prevention programs that we do in the schools. We have th intervention programs that we do. We have youth service specialists in the school that if anybody has a problem with alcohol or drugs, they can go to and they will give them help and get them into whatever is necessary. They will assess them and decide if they need to go to the Daniel Bryant Youth and Family Treatment Center, which is our adolescent and family treatment center, or if they need to go to drug and alcohol classes or what they need. We have things for parents, for siblings. Um, and so we do prevention by working with these kids in the schools and doing a lot of different sober activities. So lots of things. Well, obviously the council has a wealth of programs available to the community when it comes to drug and alcohol abuse. How does someone find their way to the council? There are many, many gateways to the council. They often are referred by the schools. They're referred by the criminal justice system. Parents can call if they have a child or a loved one. We have a drop-in center where anyone can go and talk to someone and say, you know, I have a friend with a problem with alcohol or drugs, or I have a problem, and we will get them into the right kind of program. So there's lots of gateways. Probation sends people. Um, teen Court, which is one of our programs, brings people. There's a variety of, way, of gateways. Penny, you've been with the council for over 25 years. What compels you to do this work? Well, I'll tell you, 25 years ago, I lost my daughter to substance abuse. And, excuse me, I don't usually do this, but it motivated me to help kids. And I really want to help them. And drugs and alcohol, there are so many families that suffer from the loss of friends or their children. And so I, um, my degrees were in business. I was an interior designer, but when my daughter died, I wanted to do something to help. And I was on the board of the council. And they asked me if I would do the job as executive director temporarily. I've been temporarily doing it for 26 years, and I love it. We have helped so many kids and so many families. Well, thank you, Penny, for doing the work you do. Thank, thank you for you. sharing a personal story with our viewers. And thank you to the council for being around and providing all of the support to our community when it comes to drug and alcohol abuse. Up next, we'll be talking with Ed. Ed, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. You're the director of the council's teen court parenting and mentoring programs. What are some of the issues that you encounter that our audience might not even be aware of? Thank you, that's a great question. I think for our audience in Santa Barbara, our paradise, we need to realize that we, as me as a director, I am seeing young children, how frequently and how often they're using alcohol and drugs, and it's a significant factor. And when we're looking at this issue here in Santa Barbara, it crosses over ethnic populations and all social economic groups. And as programs, what we are trying to provide are the services that meet the needs for all of the individuals in our community that need that help to make a difference in their lives. Describe for me, if you will, some of the programs that you offer to youth and teens. 
in the initiatives that we provide here at CADA or the Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, let's start at the front end of our defense, and it's our school-based mentoring program. We believe that children that are invested in education are less apt to be involved in early onset use of alcohol and drugs. That's why we seek out to our community to come in and volunteer, have adults volunteer one hour a week to spend time with the child at school so that they can help with their dream to continue on to education and help them through those social issues that they may be looking at as children moving from elementary school to middle school. Well, you've certainly described in depth um, the ways that the council gets involved with, with kids and youth. Let me ask one more question. How do you keep kids from slipping through the, the cracks in the system? No, absolutely. I think one of the things, and, and uh, we've heard this before in what Penny has said, is that we want to look at engaging families, parents needing to be part of the solution, which is why we have a parent program, why we have a substance use prevention education resource program, so that parents can learn about what their children are involved in, what they are navigating through as adolescents, as teenagers, and they can engage in conversations and help their children one traverse through these challenges that they're facing and that the parents could be part of the solution on that and bridging those parents involved with that. For the schools to eliminate a system in which the discipline approach is expulsion because we're dealing with some of these addiction issues that our, our students are facing, 25% of our students in the Santa Barbara School District need treatment and we need to look at a different approach in helping the students much less than just tossing them out in the street and it just doesn't work because they violated a school code and, and the schools are working at with that. How does someone who is interested in supporting the council go about doing that? What are your needs? What can our audience do to help support your programs and your work? I think in this community, I think they can support this program in a various number of ways. There's one, we can volunteer to participate in a lot of our program opportunities. If you're an attorney, become a judge. If you're an adult that's interested in services, volunteer, mentor a youth, or become involved with the program. If you have the funding to support and sponsor scholarships for children that need these services, provide the finance and funding to make it happen. Your dollars make a difference to change the face of our community and make it a healthier and safer place. That is our mission. And the reason why we are successful and the reason why we continue to need the help of Santa Barbara to come in and be part of this solution, because it's not the agency, it's the community as a whole that comes together that makes this happen. We need your help. How would someone get in contact with the council? Our council numbers here are 963-1433. Um, if you would go to our website, which is www.cadasb.org, you will see a phenomenal website that has all of our services so that you can, one, navigate through the website, understand what our programs are about, and if you're interested to sponsor or interested to volunteer, you can look at the program that you are interested in and get in contact with us and we will make it happen. Ed, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. The council is doing so much to support our community. It's an honor to be a part of the council. It's an honor to be a part of this community. You're watching Nonprofit Spotlight. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future nonprofit spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.